Hey guys, welcome to the channel. I'm Peter. Today's video shows you how I found and speared my second white sea bass of the season. This is my first white sea bass at Catalina. All my other ones have been coastal here along the mainland. And it was only in the third dive of the kelp bed, but it was in the middle and thickest part. So forgive the graininess and darkness of the video, but don't worry, you're still gonna see some really cool things in and above the water and learn a few things along the way. So before we jump in, do me a favor, smash that like button. It'll tell me whether you enjoy my videos and are getting something out of it or not. And if at the end you don't like the video, hit it again and take that like away. It's only fair. So with that, let's get right into the action and jump right in. The water was beautiful. Visibility was about 40 feet. The water was still a little cold at 66 degrees. I'm slowly dropping, trying to be very quiet while scanning through all the kelp. And then I think I see something between the stalks. It's something dark. And then I realize that's a white sea bass. And it's a shot, but he's in front of the rocks. So I need to drop lower until he clears it. Yes! Connect! Holy smokes, this guy's taken off! I actually grabbed the line. In a moment, it cut right through my glove. Unbelievable. He's just ripping lines, so then I dawned on me to grab the wheel to slow him down. He's still tugging away hard as I'm heading up for air. I'm trying to get this guy under control. He's pulling, and I'm trying to keep the line taunt. And now I'm stuck in all this kelp. Again, I'm in the middle of the kelp, the thickest part, while this guy's pulling, and I'm trying to keep control. I'm not 100% sure it's a great shot, so I don't want to pull too hard, but at this point, I've got to just work with what I got. Eventually, I'm right on top of the end of the line. So now I'm looking for my buddy, Josh, and trying to wave him down. I see him towards the boat. Yeah! All right, so now Josh is with me and I am diving down to figure out what's happening at the end of this line. And then I see that it's actually stuck on the reef. So I've got to untangle this thing and hope that my fish is still on the end of this line. And as I look up, there he is. He's at the base of that stock. I know it's hard to see in the video, but I saw him pretty clearly in the water. So as I come up, Josh offers to drop down and take a look for me to make sure that guy has a decent shot and that he's not going anywhere. Having a good dive buddy in these situations is invaluable. Yeah, we can get him. Just, this is the stock he's on. <laughs> so with Josh's intel, I take a drop to go get my fish. You never know how badly wrapped they are at the bottom. But surprise, this guy actually popped out. And more or less, an easy grab. I quickly put this guy to sleep. I know it looks brutal, but it's truly the most humane thing we can do to stop all the suffering and pain. And then I carefully cut the gills. Always be aware of where your fingers are when you're doing this don't need to add your blood to his. Bleeding the fish is the best way for the flavors of the meat to come through. All right, success. Okay, so I'm back at the boat and need to get my fish on board. And that didn't work. Let me, let me try again. Oh, no, dang it. This guy is heavy and slippery. So I, I need to get it way deep. Every effort. And it slides back, so I can't do this. I need to come up with another plan, so I decided to get on board and pull him up. My buddy Josh is in the middle of the kelp, helping me pull in hundreds of feet of line, grab my gun, and really help me out so I can take care of this fish. As you can tell, I've never gotten a big fish on board a boat by myself from the water, so good learning experience.
I want to show you a trick on how to get the slip tip out of your fish if you don't already know it. You take the spectra and make a little loop and you wrap it around the pointy part of your slip tip all the way at the end and then you pull it through the original hole that that slip tip made and guide it through and it should come out. Ta-da! And then you just unwrap it. So this works a lot of times and it's a time saver. Okay, time to do a complete Ikejime. So I'm not that skilled to do Ikejime wire technique from the head, so I always cut the tail so that I can expose the spine to get to the nerve canal that runs along the top of the spine. So I'm gonna run the wire along that nerve canal and you'll see the fins and the fish kind of move around. This fish is completely dead, as you saw. And this destroys all that nerve activity, all electrical energy in that fish. ATP stops, no decomposition starts, and this thing is ready for ice. This was a nice fish, pretty much identical to the first one I got. Wow, wasn't that wild? How hard and fast that white sea bass took off? Man. That thing was so powerful. It was insane. And wasn't it so beautiful? The purples and iridescent colors of that fish, unbelievable. I don't know if you could see the colors as clearly as I did through the camera, but in person, it was just amazing. Let's go over some of the things that are involved in white sea bass hunting that I think could help you out. You gotta be super quiet. That requires that you make sure your gear is really set up correctly. So don't have a whole bunch of stuff hanging off your belt. Make sure your knife is secure and doesn't clang or hit anything when you're swimming. Make sure your fins don't clack and hit each other. Make sure you are as quiet as you can be. And that even includes your wetsuit. I always make a first dive to get all those bubbles out. You just don't need anything happening underwater with like a squeak or something that happens in your suit or your gear. It can easily spook a white sea bass away. Don't ask me how I know. Another tip is, after shooting a white sea bass, if that sucker is ripping line off your reel, do not grab the line like I did, because in a fraction of a second, it just cut a hole through my glove and gave me a good burn on my finger. So if that's happening, grab the reel to slow it down and take control. It's just much better. And you want to be really careful, if you're holding that fish by the gills for control, that you know exactly where your fingers are when you're taking your knife and cutting the gills. It's really easy to cut yourself, so be aware. I know of some divers that have cut themselves because their knives are so sharp and it's a mess. So again, just be aware. And if for some reason you need to get on the boat with your fish by yourself, get on board first and then bring the fish on board. It's a lot easier, as you saw. And finally, the slip tip trick that I showed you. It's really handy. I usually do it in the water, but I did this one on land so you guys can see how it actually works. Give it a shot. If you don't already know how, it'll save you time and hassle. But there still might be a case where you'll have to um, take the slip tip out by detaching it from the shaft or way too fillet that fish. But hopefully, this will get you by. So I hope those uh, are some good tips that you guys can use. And let me know in the comments if there's anything else you want to know, and I'll do my best to answer. And let me know what you think about the video. Here we are. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, smash that like button. And if you already hit it, don't touch it. <laughs> uh, consider subscribing if you haven't already to join me diving beautiful California and beyond. Until then, take care. <laughs>